First, I just want to thank God. Tell God, thank you for being here, dear God. Then I want to tell Pastor Scott, hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah, for listening to the voice of God and allowing this church to be open today, hallelujah. We needed to be here today, hallelujah. Amidst all the things that's going on, hallelujah. All the things that we're hearing all week long, hallelujah. We need a place to come to, hallelujah, and empty out, hallelujah. We need to come here, hallelujah, and let some of this stuff go, hallelujah. All week long, hallelujah. All we hear is this. All we hear is that. Turn this channel. Turn that channel. Facebook here.
control, honey. Hallelujah, God's in control, honey. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let no devil in hell fool you, honey. God is in control, honey. He's got it all. We got it all. Hallelujah, he made it all. He made it all. Hallelujah. Society got ready to come over. I'm not I'm telling y'all, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Keep eating good. Keep eating good. Still live right back. Still live right back. Keep eating good. A well-balanced act. A well-balanced act. A little prayer. A little prayer. A little for acid. Hallelujah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Fall on your knees. Hallelujah. You look a little. I mean, well-balanced. Well-balanced. Read, fellowship, coming to church. Coming to church on time. Coming to Sunday school. Coming to Bible study. All the above. I'm going to pour it out. All of it. All of it. Well-balanced act. Hallelujah. You keep you going. All your vitamins. Hallelujah. You eat them all. Hallelujah. Come on, sister. Hallelujah. to greet everyone this morning. We want to welcome you to Away Church. Amen. So what we'll do today, we will look at your neighbor, turn to your neighbor beside you. You can either air hug them or you can bump them like this. Just bump them or air hug them. Just say welcome to the Way Church. We're just so glad you're here. And then you can hug them if you want to. Welcome to the Way Church. Welcome you.
So if you didn't have got your pledges yet, yet, please do so. Put your pledges in today. We appreciate all this pain and we pledge. We do appreciate it. It does not go unnoticed and appreciate it. Okay, lift your offering up. That will follow. Uh, we come before you right now, God. We'll just tell you thank you, God. Thank you for the money that we have to give you today, God. Realize now, God, it's yours, God. You give us the energy, oh God, to go out, oh God, and make the money, oh God. And, the energy of God to go to the jobs of God. We thank you for it right now. God, realize, oh God, it wasn't for you, oh God. We can do nothing, oh God. Realize, oh God, it all belongs to you, oh God. But you just ask for a little bit of it back, oh God, to keep your kingdom going, oh God. But we thank you and we bless you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, y'all follow the directions of the ushers. But the box is right here. So just follow his direction, please. We're going to have everybody continue standing. We're going to start with the first thing. Say, don't worry about the two hours in the middle. We're going to last. We're going to have you to come out for the last time. Pass us by. 
<laughs> opposition after opposition. So we we finally was able to get it together. And so right now, we want to blow your mind. Let you know that we was working with it. The artwork was rejected three times. But we tried again. <laughs> this is from our brother's apartment. I'm going to let the pastor come and unveil it. <laughs> hey. Hey. It's gonna cost. I said, no, nah, well, never mind. We won't go that route. <laughs> so I had to end up going through Kinko's to get Kinko's to approve the artwork. And here it is. We present it from our brother's department. <laughs> I don't want to preach. 
something was up. And I said, now what in the world is this? But, you know, it's kind of hard to pull something over on somebody that, you know, know a little bit. But I kept looking over and said, well, where is that little said, He ain't over here. And something feels strange. And I, for some reason, I just felt something and then he said, we got a presentation. I said, okay. Who's getting presented to today? <laughs> Bless the Lord. They come up with this here, this. Woo! My first podium was made of wood. And believe it or not, it was built by his dad, Elder Rufus Lewis. That was our first podium. And then the second one that I had, we got it from South Carolina. And the other one that they just pulled off the stage, don't y'all throw that away now. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got that when we moved in here and I had started getting attached to it. Because Lady Scott was saying something yesterday about a podium. About, you know, we need to get another podium. And I said, well, we can just put some more tape on that one. And, you know, maybe we can... You know, the screws were stripped on the bottom, so maybe we could put some wood chips in. You know, you know, when you like something real good, you ain't just trying to just give it up any kind of way. And when you think you got a little bit of skill or something, you try something. You didn't know that the Lord was preparing my heart for this today. Thank you, Way Church. Amen. I thank the Lord for being able to serve you. I hope to be able to preach now. And to God be the glory for the things that he has done. We certainly honor our sister pastor. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is a servant in the house of the Lord. And I thank God for him because my heart and safety trust in him. Certainly to all of our ministers, Minister King, and Minister Hall, and God for me. To our deacons on today, we honor you. To all of our mothers in Zion, we thank God for you on today. To our visiting friends and family, can we give God praise? Amen. Thank God for sending you to God. God bless you still all the way down from Berlin. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. See Mother down and back there. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Sister Moore, on her way traveling around the world, she said she stopped back by and see us again. And thank God for all of you, God's people. Amen. Because we can't have church if nobody don't show up. Praise the Lord. Now, I've done that before. And having people feels a whole lot better. Amen. So we thank the Lord for you. Praise the Lord. Before I get into the message, I did want to uh, just let you know that we have decided to postpone the vision banquet to a later date. Amen. A whole lot of things have been coming up, you know, personally for the saints of God. And different things and you know I got messages at different ones I uh, said that for whatever reason that they couldn't make it and I had already felt like that I needed to push it forward but you know sometimes when you do something you know it's kind of set in stone and you want to do it praise the Lord Hallelujah. but the spirit said no go ahead and push it back further praise the Lord and so amen it will be announced at a later date in the summer if you've already paid uh, for it, the record is there. You will not be doubly charged. Your money will be held, as the as the old folks say, in escrow. <laughs> amen. It will be held. Praise the Lord. Those of you, Amen, that have not, please continue to see Sister Lewis. Praise the Lord. With that, um, we want to wow you. If, 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 if the brothers are already doing something like this, you can't even imagine what God is about to do in the next season. Come on, tell God, thank you. Briefly, I also wanted to address, amen, praise the Lord, uh, to continue to keep our church doors open 
amid this uh, coronavirus, praise the Lord, was not a decision that I just came at lightly, nor did I go after it bullheadishly, thinking, well, we got the anointing, we got the power of God, we ain't gonna worry about stuff. People that don't lead people can say stuff like that. But when you are a leader, you have to think of every angle possible. And you have to go slow enough. Yeah. Amen. The bigger your bus get, you can't, you can't turn it on a dime. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You got a little small Chevette. How many remember the Chevettes? Praise yeah. God. You can show and go on and you'll be all right. But you driving a big old 15 passenger or even a bus, you got to kind of slow. Go around that curve a little slower. So, amen. We took our time and we thought about it. And what I'm telling you, we're not up here to condemn any other church that decided to close down, nor do we think we're better because we're open. But I felt the leading of God's spirit to be open and to be in the services of the Lord today. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I'll say this so that our thinking can be enlightened. When you're not on a certain level, you don't think like people on that level because you only see here. And if you ever get there, then you'll see why certain people made the decisions that they made. But when you're blindsided and you don't know uh, the perspective of an individual, you need to be careful judging and allowing a lot of things coming out your mouth because time has a way of making you eat your words because you don't know. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? I've never pastored a thousand member church. I've never pastored a 30,000 member church. I can only imagine what the Joel Osteens and the T.D. Jakes are going through, amen, in this season right now. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you're not there yet. So God haven't given you the grace to deal with that. So deal with things where you are. So what we want us to do, we want to praise the Lord. We want to have the church doors open. Amen. We want to be able to dance and shout. But we want you to be responsible. Be clean. Wash your hands. Let me say that again. Wash your hands. Be clean. Cleanliness is next to holiness. In fact, holiness is clean. So wash your hands. Praise the Lord. Your bodies and your houses and stuff. And I don't care how much you want to be to church. If your immune system is compromised, stay home until you feel better. Praise the Lord. I remember there was a time where I don't care how sick you was. I said, come on to the church. Come on, come on. We the hospital. And we are the hospital. But then there's another scripture that said, call for the elders of the church. So that does mean that sometimes you can get in a place where you can't come to the house of God. The house of God got to come to you. So don't ever be so narrow-minded that you think that something is just one way. It's not just one way. Even with us claiming Psalms 91 over our life, it's not just when he says the plagues won't come now, you'll do it mean that the plagues won't come. What that means is that when you follow God, he will give you directions on how to avoid a man being contaminated with those things. Sometimes he'll say, your Aunt Gloria wants you to come eat dinner in her house with the Spirit said, don't go over there again. Now, you can say, well, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Well, he was trying to tell you so it wouldn't prosper, but you went over, you got all that faith, and you went over there and ate anyway, and now we're looking down on you saying, don't he look so natural? It wasn't that the word of God wasn't there, it wasn't you wasn't obedient. So what you need to do is go slow enough so that you don't ever have to eat your words. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Live long enough to realize that sometimes we just don't know what we're talking about. Are y'all quiet up in here? Now, when we get wise enough to know that, then we'll... Hallelujah. Amen. That's enough of that. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody say, there's a word in the house today. Praise the Lord. Y'all still happy? Oh, yeah. Are y'all satisfied with the praise you gave the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Do you feel like you ought to give him just a little bit more praise? If, if, if there's anybody here that ain't quite satisfied, you feel like you want to give God something, why don't you just stand to your feet and just give him 
the best friend for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah! Oh, good Lord. I want you to know that if you really knew what the Lord was about to do for you, you would just move your mind and pray. Hallelujah! If you knew that not only was he going to break you out, but he's getting ready to put you in a wealthy place, you ought to give him the glory. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is with him. Bless his holy name. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord.
Come on, somebody. Yeah. Once the ball game is over, your team won or lost, that's it. Yeah. But when you have God, amen, and the word of the Lord, it's a lot different. So I, I, I need to do a demonstration. And Dean Travis, I want you to come on up. And one of you brothers come to right quick. Come quickly. It don't matter which one. Amen. I want you, I want you to take, yeah, and hold that just like that. Stand in front of the people. And I need you to stand over there. Oh, which way? Which way? You gonna stand there? Okay, you stand there. Mm -hmm. you stand there. You stand in front. Let that one hang down straight. There you go. Hallelujah. It's gonna be interesting today. So y'all just follow me. Amen. Amen. You know. You know. When we were young, we were taught. That when we color, you color how? Side of the lines, right? If you draw a line, you make a straight line. We were taught, amen, things were pretty straightforward. That either you were up or down, in or out, black or white. Is that right? We were never given any, praise the Lord, uh, alternative to think any other way. And so as young people, praise the Lord, when we went and attacked life, especially as salvation, we came at life looking for it to be like this. Is that right? You have a start. And you haven't finished. And so life, amen, needed to be straight. Amen. Life needed to be simple. But how many of you, after living for a while, found out that life sometimes can be anything but simple? I know that's right. Yes, sir. In fact, when you start dealing with salvation, Salvation and being in church and loving God can be anything but simple. In fact, how many of you can raise your hand and say that your life don't look like this? How many of y'all life look like this? Y'all y'all like your life? Your, how many of you more so identify with this right here? Right. And, 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 and so, praise the Lord, many times we, we're mad at life and mad at salvation because it doesn't look like this because we've been trained and taught that if you're going to be saved and you're going to walk with the Lord, then this is exactly how life needs to be. But the truth of the matter is if you live long enough, if you deal with people long enough, you'll find out that the majority of people's lives are like this. Now everything is touching and everything is connected, but you don't really know where the beginning begins and the end ends. And so we call this simple, but we call this complicated. Oh, y'all are here. Uh, I want to talk to somebody today who know you say, but you don't feel like you say. No, you love God, but sometimes things fight at your assurance of who you are in God. Sometimes you feel sanctified. Sometimes you feel crankified. Sometimes you feel holy. Don't get mad at me. Sometimes you feel horny. Oh, they done got quiet now. Y'all already know by now I'm the real preacher. So if you don't like it, exit now. But I love God. And I can't explain it. Because it's complicated. That's what we say when words fail to express what we're going through in life. You try 
to tell people what's going on. But the truth of the matter is, it's complicated. That's the name of, of, of the lesson today. I want to talk about it's complicated. Look at somebody and just tell them, it's complicated. I know you just saw me shouting and speaking in tongues a few minutes ago and now I'm somewhere else but I, I can't explain it. It's just complicated. You know, I, I, I sleep next to the woman of my dreams and I love her and I did everything to get her and now I got her and sometimes I don't want her and it's just I said, don't, 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 don't look at nobody but me because you might get in trouble. <laughs> I love my children, I love them, I love them, but sometimes they drive me upside the wall and, and the same thing that I burnt out make me want to hang him, but Amen. it's <laughs> complicated. I love my pastor, I love my church, I love the brothers and sisters, but sometimes I tell you, it's just Can we just be real sometime and just say it's complicated? Can, 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 can we just be honest sometime and, 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 and stop talking this deep language of Zion and let's get real for just a second and admit that some things are not just easily deciphered, that sometimes it takes time to get it together. Yeah. And somehow it's so funny that once we have gotten in a place where we have arrived, in our salvation, we have so little patience with those that are struggling in their immaturity. Hallelujah. You forgot how complicated it was trying to walk this life. And sometimes we in holiness don't make it easy for it to become un We complicated it the most. Here I am trying to do all I know how to do. I think I'm serving the Lord. And then somebody said, boy, you ain't doing that right. You just, nah, boy, you're going to be lost. You keep, you keep doing that, ain't right. And so now you're confused because I thought I did what the Lord said do. You told me that if I got the Holy Ghost, I would be saved and I'm on my way to heaven. But now when I hear you talk about that you saved, now you talk about praying for me that I make it in the end. It's complicated. Because I thought I was saved. So I'm not saved or I am saved or. Ooh. Hallelujah. If I wear this, I'm a heathen. <laughs> if I wear that, I'm a saint. And so we have the good guys dressed like this. And we have the bad guys dressed like that. But what happened when the good guys and the bad guys switch clothes? And so now I'm looking at what's supposed to be a good guy and he acting bad, but he looked good because all my life I've been taught that that is good. And then the guy that, that, that looks bad, he's actually good, but I'm treating him like he's bad because all my life I've been taught that he is bad. And what if I told you that there's a little good and bad in both of them. And what if I told you that God is in charge of both of their lives and their ending is not determined by your prejudge or your prejudice. It is determined by the word of God. It's gonna be a little tough today, y'all. But I, I just I, I don't know if I can put my hand behind my ear and moan this one. I got to talk this one. Y'all can be seated. And I need you to go with me, amen, to two passages of scripture today. Amen. Once you get it, signify by standing and say amen. I want to go to Romans chapter 7. And I want to read in your hearing verses 21 through 25. And then we will read Romans 8 and 1. Um, I feel a series coming on. So I don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to try my best uh, to, to teach completely. Praise the Lord. But if it, if, if it runs on, we'll just cut it off and, and start it again next time. Is that all right with y'all? Yeah. Once you get this, 
uh, scripture passage if you'll stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those that are able. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 7 and at verse 21 and then Romans chapter 8 and at verse 1. Amen. Romans 7 and 21 says this. He says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Bringing me into captivity in the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Hmm. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, may we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is right, which is sound, which is true. Open up our understanding. Give us a revelation of your word. Teach us and we shall be taught. We'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of prayer. Now, I was always familiar with Romans 8 and 1 because my pastor preached that hammered on it. Amen. There's therefore now, praise God, amen, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, praise God, amen, who walk not after the flesh, but that, I think I could probably quote the first five verses verbatim because it was put in me. That there is no condemnation of him in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So I thought that I had a pretty good grasp of the context and the meaning of the scripture. But how many of you know that as you grow with the Lord and walk with him, he will challenge your theology? Yes, he will. And if God is not challenging your theology, you don't have a relationship with him. If God, and I'm going to tell you the truth, like if God doesn't challenge the way you've seen a thing and make you think about it over again, you probably don't talk to him enough. Because when you talk to God enough, when you deal with God on a certain level, God will check what you think you know. And you'll realize that you don't know what you thought. So I was comfortable with preaching Romans 8 and 1. But then I came across the 7th chapter of Romans. And when I began to read some of the things that the apostle, not Lepion, but the apostle Paul was saying, praise the Lord, I thought that he sounded like uh, 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 bipolar. Yeah, y'all quiet now. I thought Apostle Paul sounded bipolar. I, I'm just thinking myself, no, not the Apostle. He ain't struggling with, he ain't struggling like I was struggling. I got saved when I was 10, so I was I was in my adolescence, pre-adolescence, and then in my teen years, and, and so add salvation to going through your teenage years to when natural things in life begin to happen and take place. And, 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 and let me tell you something about the saints. The saints won't let you grow up and be a child. Not if you say you got the Holy Ghost. You got to be a little adult. That ain't natural. I don't care how you put it. Yes, Lord, they quiet, but we don't get through this. Take a deep breath. And so, praise the Lord, when I begin to look at this, 
The Apostle Paul began to describe exactly where I was at. He says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Anybody ever seen that law in action? And every time I have a mind to do something that's right, something that is wrong presents itself. It's kind of almost like the law of the wheat in the tear. Every time you plant some wheat somewhere, the enemy gonna plant a tear somewhere. It's, it, it, it's, it, it kind of balances life out. You're never going to get by without having some type of opposition in life. Hallelujah. And, and so the apostle Paul describes a man this sin in his flesh. He describes it as the law of sin. And, and this is what he talks about. And I want y'all to follow me because this, this is a little meaty. I don't want to choke nobody, but this is a little meaty. So you're going to have to sit back and, and kind of listen to this. He deals with, praise the Lord, uh, 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 having the spirit of God, but yet having your flesh. Amen. And sometimes the way we taught it was that once you got saved, that there was nothing else. The flesh was gone. And, and you know, because the Bible says, mortify the deeds of, of the flesh. And so if you're dead to sin, how shall you live any longer therein? And so you quote that. And so, praise the Lord, I hear preachers get up and say, I thank God for being free from sin and sin's desires. But what they forgot to tell you was that you kill that bad boy today and you got to get up tomorrow and nail that thing one more time and, 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 and it's not the Holy Ghost that's going to kill it, you got to kill it it's like the living dead it's nasty, it's rotten it's putrid but it won't keep getting up living you thought you dealt with it. You thought you handled it. I, I handled my attitude. I handled my anger. I handled it. But, and, 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 and you go on for about five years thinking you delivered. But the only reason why you feel like you're delivered from a thing is because you have not had something to challenge it to make it rise up. I said, I was told that if you went five miles, now I've been driving for a good little while. 
I, I was told that if you drive five miles over the speed limit, that, that, that you can't get a ticket. He says, if you go one mile over the speed limit, we can give you a ticket. He said, the problem is so many people go over it that, that if we were to give tickets for that, we wouldn't get nothing else done because we'd be getting tickets all day long. And, 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 and from that, I understood that the law is the law and the law shows you, amen, praise the Lord, what sin is. The law defines what sin is. He said, I would not have known what adultery was or what fornication was or what lust was except the law defined it. And he said, when the law, praise the Lord, was given to me, he said, then sin revived and I died. How can, I, how can I explain that? As long as your parents don't give you a curfew, you're normally in the house at a good time. Oh, I'm talking so much. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to sit this down at your door so you can understand what I'm saying. As long as your parents don't ever, because as you're growing up, parents don't start off giving curfews because you're too young to go anywhere and do anything. Is that right? So, 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 they didn't start off saying you got to be home by 10 or you got to be home by 9 or 11 or 12. You, you know, prayer. you didn't ask, they didn't tell, and generally you got in at a good time and everything was all right. But the moment they put a law there and says you better be back here before 11 o'clock, and what ends up happening, everything in when I would do good, evil is present. And what happens is you got to fight to get somewhere before, praise the Lord. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. The pastor says service start at 11 o'clock. Everything get in your way to keep you from getting to church on time. And sometimes nothing physically did it. You just didn't do it because your flesh fought you. What is it that fights rules and regulations? It is sin in your flesh. See, a lot of times we look at sin, amen, as some big thing. Like, praise the Lord, like, like I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't dip and hang with those that do. And so, amen, if, if I'm not doing the big things and, you know, I'm holy and I'm sanctified. But don't you know that if you breaking the speed limit, you sinning? You parking the fire lane because you, you got hurt and go in the grocery store and get back out? Praise the Lord, you sitting there in that lane and, and you, put the, you put the blinkers on, praise the Lord, and you running there to get the milk and then you come out and the policeman is writing you a ticket, then you're going to come to church and testify and say, that devil wrote me a ticket. No, 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 no. You was the devil because Satan is the adversary. You were breaking the law when you know it said, don't park here. If people were just in their natures, we wouldn't need to have lines out there in the parking lot. There's lines because you might not park right. <laughs> You're going to take more, amen, than what the next man brings or you'll get in his face. So they put lines. That's a law. <laughs> and you're right. Because the moment they see those lines, amen, something revives on the inside. Preaching against sin produces a rebellion in folk. It makes you want to do exactly what the preacher said don't do. What is it that causes me to want to react like I'm trying to tell you? It's your flesh. And your flesh is very much alive. Don't you let nobody tell you no different. I mean, you can talk in the most beautiful tongues and interpret them and glory be to God and you can heal the sick and you can raise the dead and all those good. But I want you to know that there is a part and a side of you that everybody has not seen. Yeah. And it's ugly. And where we run into trouble at is when folk ain't never, they've always seen your spiritual side, but they ain't seen your fleshly side. And when they run into your fleshly side after they've never seen it before, it shocks them. Come on, come on. Because they put you on a pedestal. Yes. And we hypocrite and act like we walk. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lord, they quiet come today. On, Lord. And so what Paul does, he explains to 
to you that sin has a law. And the law of sin says that wherever there is a law telling you that, praise the Lord, you shouldn't do something, it is the sin that revives that want to do the exact opposite of what it told you to do. Amen. Why is it, praise the Lord, when you first get married to somebody, sisters, you want to cook him grits and eat, whether you can cook or not. You want to serve him and love on him and rub his feet and do all that kind of and yeah. And brothers, when you when you first get married, you want to sit next to him. What? Sit together. Just want when, when, when you was courting them, praise the Lord, all of a sudden you was texting them and every five and what you doing? And you, and you, but then all of a sudden when you when you now you've been married and now he said, Well, you know, I'm your husband, you ought to cook for me. No, I ain't your man. <laughs> Your hands ain't broke. Cook for yourself. <laughs> what make you do that? The rebellion against the law. He put a law on you and said, well, I won't, I won't get ready by 6 o'clock every night. And you said, after all that I've done today, I work just like you work. Well. See, I done, left, I done lost half of the church already. You fight that sin. You tell a child real good. You say, you say, now, Mikey, don't touch that. I'm gonna sit that right there. Don't touch it. If you touch it, I'm gonna give you a whip. Now, I done gave you the law, and I done gave you the penalty. I gave you the law and the penalty. I'm hoping, praise the Lord, that the penalty, Amen, will outweigh your desire to break the law. But isn't it somehow you can know the penalty of a thing and be tempted to do it and break the law even though the penalty of the thing is there? Amen. He that commits fornication sins against his own soul. You know that. You know you could be getting hooked up to a demon. But gosh, you look good. In your flesh. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm talking to believers today. I'm not talking to the, to the sinners right this minute. <laughs> see, that's that's the crazy thing. Because see, sinners they ain't under no covenant. They ain't under no obligation. They can live like they want to, do like because they they gonna go to hell anyway. Funny part about it is that. They know more about what you should be doing and not doing than a lot of times you know. But what is it? I know I ain't moaning today. I know the music ain't behind me. But yo, just lean in. Follow me a little bit because I'm going somewhere. But it's still good. You are, when you get saved, and, and, and I think to help you understand this, and I want you to understand that man is a complicated being. Okay? Humanity is a tripart being. He is a spirit who lives in a body and possesses a soul. Can I say that again for my note takers? He is a spirit. You are a spirit. The Bible says that man was created in the image of God. The image is not the flesh. The image is the spirit. God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. All the body was was an earth suit. The word looks and said that he looked and saw that there was not a man to till the soil. Why? Man was created but he was not formed. He had no way to operate on the earth because the earth was physical. The earth was terra. The earth was grinding. The earth was land. The earth was physical but man was spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so your body is what relates to the earth. It is your body that feels the wind blow. It is your body that gets hot, that gets cold, that sweats. It is your body that gets hungry. It is your body, praise the Lord, that has interaction. God gave you the body so that you could walk around and experience the earth. But you are not your body. You are a 
are a spirit. St. John chapter 4 and about verse 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. and in truth. Now, for years, I thought that when he said that you must worship him in spirit and truth, I thought it was talking about having the Holy Ghost. That's not what that means. If you go look at that, and if you look at the S there, the S is a lowercase s. It's not a capital S. Capital S means Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Amen? Part of God here. Amen? But the lowercase s means that it is the Spirit. And what is that Spirit? It is the human Spirit. It is the pneuma. It is the ruach. It is the breath that God breathed into man. It is inside of you. And because, praise the Lord, that is the only thing that comes from God. That is the only way you can worship God is in your spirit. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Because God is not moved by fleshly things. Y'all quiet. It is a spiritual experience. Oh God. And so praise the Lord. In order to worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? That truth does not mean your doctrinal dogma. It means in spirit and honesty. You cannot come to God faking and hypocrite and get somewhere with him. You have to be real with I know I'm, 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 I'm going somewhere different, but you got to follow me. Yes, sir. See, 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 there are folk that got the doctrine down pat. There are folk that got the church work down pat. But when they come to God, they can't get nowhere next to God because they're not worshiping in them and in the spirit. And nor are they being truthful. You can't love God while you hate on me. You ain't in no spirit when you're holding animosity in your heart against your neighbor. So he says, in order to worship me, see, 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 the, the woman at the well was trying to take him into a religious argument and said, well, our father said that, 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 uh, uh, that we worship in this mountain. And y'all said Jerusalem is the place that you ought to worship. And Jesus shut it down. He said, I'm not about to be a part of this uh, uh, religious debate of, of whether you should be in Jerusalem or Samaria. Location does not matter. And what matters is, hallelujah, where your heart is. And your heart has to be spiritual and it has to be honest. has to be true. Hmm. So man is a tripart being. He, he has a body. He is a spirit. The spirit is the most realest part of you. The spirit was created to live forever. You are an eternal being because you were created in God's image. You will live forever. Oh God. You will live forever. Hmm. You lived before you were born. Amen. Yeah. Oh, he told Jeremiah, before you came forth out of the womb, before you were formed, I, I knew you, knew, 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 past you. If God don't know you, you don't exist. That's right. The very fact that God said he knew you mean you existed. Maybe not in this form. So you are an eternal being. I'm not talking about your flesh. I'm talking about your spiritual man. And when you die, it means the body and the spirit is separated. And the breath goes back to God that gave it. And the body goes back to the dust from whence it came. Amen. But your spirit will live forever. So when the Bible talks about eternal life, he's not saying that some will live in eternity and others will not live in eternity. 
When he's talking about eternal life and eternal damnation, he's dealing with location. Location meaning that if I have eternal life, I'm going to be with God. But the second death means I'm going to be separated from God. So a, a, a death means separation. When somebody dies, they separate from you. But I promise you, they have not ceased to exist. They are still alive. In fact, they are more alive in their spirit form than they have ever been on earth. Yes. True. True. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Yeah. The reason why I'm going, I'm trying to label this fact, because I got to get you to understand that since you are a tripart being, now I talked about uh, the spirit, and I talked about the body, but then you have the soul. Now the soul, Mr. King, is what holds your intellect, your will, your emotion. Hallelujah. And your soul can be either influenced by the spirit. Or it can be influenced by the flesh. And it is in your soul whether you have where you have the fight. It's like the battleground. Praise God, where you have the fight of whether I'm going to do the right thing or whether I'm going to do the wrong thing. That happens in your soul. When a believer gets saved, they first of all get saved in their spirit first. Okay? Alright, I want y'all to understand that. You get saved because what God is trying to do when he saves somebody, he is regenerating that dead spirit, that dead wind inside of you that you were born in sin because Adam sinned. And all death means is separation. So as an unregenerated person, you are separated from the things of God. So when somebody gets saved, he illuminates or he regenerates that spirit man. And when he gets saved, the spirit man comes alive. Now he can talk to God and God can talk to him. And they have a communication because the spirit is alive. Okay, y'all with me? The spirit is saved. The soul is being saved. The body will be saved. Let me say that again. The spirit is saved. Okay? The soul is being saved. That's sanctification. Romans 12 and 1 says what? Beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Amen. By the what? Amen. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind is the saving of your soul. So your soul is being saved. Your body will be saved. Y'all follow me? Praise God. And so, 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 so. Sanctification is what's happening in your soul. It's dealing with your mind. Your mind is being renewed. You're learning things. You do. But, 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 but the flesh is not saved. When folk get saved, they made up this song. I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I said, I looked at my feet and they did too. And it sounded good. Ooh, sound real good. Yeah. The funny part about it is if you had a bunion on your toe when you got the Holy Ghost, when you when you come when you come down, all that bunion is still there. Your feet still stink. You got the Holy Ghost, but you wake up with morning breath. Cause grass to die. You, 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 you're singing. I'm Lord, help me to tell them. Lord, help me to tell them. And I know this is the boring part, but you got to get this. You got to get this. You, 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 you sitting there, praying the Lord. You know, when you get saved and you talk about my hands look new, my feet look new. And, 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 and I'm here to tell you, your body ain't new. Keep on living, I'll show you. When I met you, you didn't have all that green in your beard. It was black. 
that. I got pictures of you on my wedding day. <laughs> you are decaying every day. This earth suit that you in is going down. Spend hours trying to fix it and make it look good. My wife looked at some hair in her head the other day. She said, my God, how come you ain't tell me that all these strings are great? Well, baby, you still look pretty to me. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. The body, your body is the same. Your body is wicked. Your body is selfish. And it's very much alive. And you have to kill it every day. Your body is selfish. When people die, we we see folks throw themselves over the casket. No, don't go. And in our mind, oh, they must have loved that person. It's not love, it's selfishness. Because if you really love them, like we really supposed to love them, we would say, well, how dare I want you to stay in your body while you're sitting there hurting and suffering? Especially, I know you know the Lord. But because of that separation, that flesh, we selfish. We don't want to let nobody go. It's the selfishness. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Your flesh is what's giving you the trouble. When I would do good, evil is better. Well, where is the evil at? For in me, that is my flesh, there dwells no good thing. In your flesh, young people, there is no good thing. No good thing. And everybody has flesh. So I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted because I love God. I got saved when I was 10. When I was 10, I wasn't thinking about no girl. Seriously, when I was 10, I wasn't, you know, that part of life hadn't kicked in. Maybe I was a late bloomer. These kids today, they grow up real fast. When I was 10, 10 was like, you know, go play with trucks and dinosaurs and, you know. Now 10 is like, I got a boyfriend. Like, oh, who? Lucia. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it. You know. But when I crossed over to my teen years and life had an effect, I had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I was a preacher at the age of 14. But good God, them girls look good. Even so much, I kept going down to Beulahville till I got one of them. I didn't marry her for her spirit. Oh, y'all don't want to be real. She didn't come walking down the aisle with her spirit showing. I wish she would have come down the aisle with a with a hairnet on and some cotton stockings and stuff like I'm gonna send you back. Because that ain't when I'm married. was married cause of my flesh. For the two shall be one. One what? I'm in the book. Book me, check me, check me. I got you. You don't want none of this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Flesh. Flesh. I was saved. I love the Lord. I was a tongue talker. But I wanted some flesh. <laughs> Just like you want some flesh. <laughs> Talk to him. I don't know what's wrong with the church. Y'all don't like the man. You see these women, they, they, they sing on, they be acting, you know, like, you know, we, we like, you need to wait on the Lord and wait. They don't want to hear that. Jesus is my 
husband, you're lying. I'm happy with Jesus alone. Yeah, until Bruce show up. Series. I'm going to have to chop this up because I ain't finished this today. So if I am a spirit that lives in the body and I have a soul, mm -hmm. then that means the enemy works in different areas. He can't, as a believer, he can't do nothing with my spirit, man. Nothing. He has no access to my spirit whatsoever because that belongs to God. That's the part of you that want to live right. That's the part of you that want to treat everybody right. That's the part of you that after you just got mad and fussed somebody out, that tells you, you know you need to go somewhere and pray. That's your spirit, man. Now, now in your flesh, your flesh is like, you know you don't need to be praying. You just got me fussing, fuss, fussing your children out. You don't need to be praying. So, so, so your flesh brings you under condemnation. Your flesh makes you feel unworthy. Your flesh makes you feel like God don't love you no more because you messed up. When the truth of the matter is, it was the flesh that been messed up all the while. Now the truth of the matter is that when God saved and delivered a believer, they are saved and sealed unto the day of redemption. Oh, y'all don't like what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, you don't believe me? Give me John 3.16. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I mean, I'm going to show you something. One of the most simple scriptures that we quote on Easter Sunday. John 3.16. Watch, watch what it say. What it say. Really good. Come on. You might have to have Say what? For God so loved the world. Listen, listen. For God so loved the world, Rufus. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him might perish. Might perish. But is the living right the the the, the praying law? Is it the prerequisite for your salvation? Oh, I'm about to blow y'all mind. I'm gonna untangle your little complicated mind because you taught that salvation is based on your performance. In fact, we come to church for 50, 60 years and and don't realize. We, we don't realize that we say what we have, how, how it goes is if I do kind of you know right I don't really know whether or not I'm going to be saved or not but if I just kind of you know keep the rules of the church and do what's you know and do what's right and if I you know do my best then maybe you don't believe it Hebrews 6 let me take this coat off getting kind of hot Hebrews 6 and 1, what does it say? Therefore, leave in the presence mm -hmm. of the doctrine of Christ. Listen. Say. 
You folks talk about, I lost the Holy Ghost and I got refilled. If you lost it, you held by. What I'm here to tell you is you really didn't lose it, you was just ignorant. If God really saved you, it ain't easy to get unsaved. Boy, I can shout right now. If God saved you, it ain't that easy to get unsaved. Give me St. John chapter 10. I feel like I'm in Bible class. St. John chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Give me about verse 25. What? I told you. Yes. Not. You didn't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, mm -hmm. they bear witness of me. Come on. And ye believe not, mm -hmm. because ye are not of my sheep. You are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, as I said unto you, my sheep, my sheep, hear my voice. Hear my voice. And I know them. I know them. They follow me. They follow me. And I give unto them. Say what? I give unto them. I give unto them eternal life. Eternal life. Who said this? Jesus. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. They might perish. They shall never perish. They shall never perish. Come on. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father. My father. Which gave them me. Which gave them me. Is greater than all. Is greater than all. No man. And not say what? No man. Are you a man? Are you human? Yeah. So that's you. You part of that. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I am my father all one. I am my father all one. I'm talking about the surety of salvation. So you say you lost the Holy Ghost. There's two only possible explanations. You either number one, you never had it, thought you had it. Somebody told you again. Look, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. <laughs> or you really got it and you lost it. And you booked for the lake. I believe that in most cases, people don't really understand the surety of their salvation. This is why the Apostle Paul, and that's why I'm taking, I'm slowing this thing down. Because some of you have bamboo been bamboozled in your flesh by the devil. Because you had some days where you fell down. You had some days where you know you ugly, messed up. Yeah. I'm not preaching to people today that you have always had it all together all your life. I'm not preaching. I'm talking about since you've been saved. I ain't talking about what you did before you got saved. I'm talking about since you've been a born again believer. Went down in the name of Jesus. Pray the Lord. Hallelujah. Since you've been saved, I want to tell you that you have not done everything right. And it is in the time when you fail, the devil will tell you, you see, you're not saved. You see, God's not in your life. If you really were saved, that wouldn't have happened. If you really knew God, you wouldn't have made that mistake. If you really, really, in that church doing all that shot with them jumping, you ain't got nothing. You just, you just, you just lost, praise the Lord. You done lost the Holy Ghost. You done, you done blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And now you come to church and you're sitting up in the house of prayer, hallelujah, and you're dead, and you're dry, and you can't get happy, you can't get loose. You're bound, praise the Lord. You're bound by your thoughts. You're bound by your feelings. And all it is is feelings. And you don't have no word to fight them feelings because you're going off of what somebody told you 15, 20 years ago who couldn't read the Bible. They didn't know if they were saved them all themselves. Hallelujah. And now they're trying to condemn you and make you feel like you ain't saved. They dead in the grave and you still sit here struggling that I really get saved in the Lord when he you has been in the church 25 years and you still struggling with the message of salvation. And it's because nobody has ever really preached a true gospel message to you. We teach God like we see God. We teach him, Andre, we teach him like we see. 
see. Why do we beat the living daylights out of our children when they do that? <laughs> why do we beat, why, why do we grab anything that we get our hands on and knock the taste out of their mouth? Because we will beat like that. Why did they, why, why, why would we beat like that? Because our parents will beat like that. And, 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 and why, why did the parent before, because they will beat like that. And who beat us like that? Our slave owners beat us like that. Our slave owners introduced us to a God of judgment and condemnation. And so when we approach God, we approach him like the slave master taught us he was. So we've got to please master the day because if we don't please him, he might give us the plague. He might give us the coronavirus. And we, we got to please master because if we don't, he might not feed us. He might not give us. And, and, and they told us about a God that was not real. And they used real scripture to teach an erroneous thought of who God was. Go ahead. Go ahead. And so really, oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. Really, your idea of God that you're struggling with did not really come from your parents or your grandparents or a bishop feeling good. It came from a slave master that wanted to control you. So they painted a narrative of God that was not true. They told you about a God that would send slaves to hell, but they themselves did not believe that. Because all their life they have had John Calvin that talked about, hallelujah, the eternal security of the saints. And we don't even read John Calvin. In fact, some of y'all, who is John Calvin? I know. I knew Calvin years ago, but they didn't, you don't even know about the church fathers. Because all you know, hallelujah, is what they said in Sunday school. Hallelujah. But John Calvin talked about the perseverance of the saints. That when God saved you, he saved you. And they believed that and they ascribed to that. But in order to control us and put us in check, they made us believe, hallelujah, that we got to have everything perfect now, hallelujah, in order to make it to heaven later. And so when we teach our gospels of holiness and sanctification, we use judgment and condemnation to make folk feel like, hallelujah, that if they don't do just like we said, they on their way to hell. So we got preachers sending folk to hell because you got on a short dress and yet the preacher himself been in the bed with somebody he wasn't married to. Got children in the church that got heads shaped like the preacher. Why? Because they wasn't living right. Hallelujah. Because they were a scrabble to a lot that they didn't believe themselves. Oh God, I got, I got Lord have mercy. So we say things like, I, I promise you I'm going somewhere, but if y'all just follow me, I, I, I'm going to get there. Wow. Yeah. You get up there, and when you hear preachers say, holiness is still right. <laughs> that, that's a dog whistle. Only those that have been raised up in holiness know what he's saying. Yeah. Holiness is still right. You know what that means. Child, I walked up on the mother and I know she was sanctified. We know what that means. That's a dog whistle. That meant that when you saw her, she had on a long dress. She had on stockings that you couldn't see through. She had a hairnet on and her hat. She had her son to come to meet and had over praise the Lord and IGA buying pork chopped and fish. And so because she's dressed like that, we say they are holy people. You hold it with your clothing, your idea of holiness, but your spirit man is nasty. And the reason why I know it's nasty, because your church won't grow. And you can't, you can't get along with nobody. On your job, you can't get along with nobody with your tongue talking self, because your spirit is nasty. And I want you to understand, your flesh ain't saved no way. You dressing up the flesh trying to make me think you saved by what you do to your flesh. But it is not your flesh that God is looking at. It is your spirit. Hallelujah. Because your flesh ain't saved right now. He ain't got no use for your flesh right now. The only use he got for your flesh is for you to bring it under subjection and obey what God said. God will a 
said, man, deal with your flesh in the resurrection. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a twinkling, in a moment of an eye. Hallelujah. And this mortal shall put on immortality. And this corruption shall put on. That's when the flesh is going to get saved. But until then, you got to drag this dead body around every day. And you got to make it obey. Hallelujah. What's going on in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the problem is, you think that every time the body messes up, that you are in danger of losing your mortal soul. This is why. Apostle Paul goes back, amen, into, amen, Romans 8 chapter and says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, consequently, when we read the King James Version, Brother John, it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Y'all see that? But if you will go back to the earliest translation and manuscript, that part is not in there. If you read the NIV, hallelujah, or the American Standard Version, that part is not in there. Why is that? Because they changed the Bible trying to see it. No, 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 no. I want you to understand that King James is not the only version of the Bible. In fact, it's not the first version of the Bible. It's just a translation into the English language. I know you love it because you've been taught that all your life. 1611, King James. But I want you to understand, it's just a translation. And when you are a serious student and a study of God's word, you go beyond what everybody told you. You go deeper so you can understand this word for yourself. Follow me in the Bible. The reason why that particular verse was put there, because it is a copy of what's down in verse 4. Yes, you got to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. But it is not talking about, pray Lord, that when you walk out of the flesh, that it cancels what the spirit done. Because if it cancels what the spirit done, then that makes what Jesus said, that no man, hallelujah, can pluck you out of my hand. It cancels that. And it makes the Bible look like it don't know what it's talking about. And when you have the Bible disagreeing with one another, you don't know what you're doing. So what is Paul talking about? What is he, what, what is, what is he saying? It's, look at somebody say, it's complicated. Let's see, I done messed with some of y'all theology. I'm looking at your faces right now. Y'all like this preacher, he's preaching Harrison now. He's telling me I can do whatever I want to do and be saved. I ain't said that. Not one time did that word come out my mouth. What I'm trying to help you understand is that what you struggle with is the flesh that you carry around. Yeah. I'm trying to help you understand that when God saved you, yeah. he saved you in your spirit. First. He says in order for a man to be born again, he must be born of the and of the yeah. your spirit got to be born again. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, thank you Jesus. Your spirit got to be born again. And so while the spirit is born again, your spirit is perfect, holy. Why? Because it represents God. It is your relationship with God. But now, praise our God, you've got to renew your soul. You've got to renew your mind. You've got, to, you've got to learn how to walk in this way. And so what's going on is your soul is relearning how to live and how to think based upon what is going on in your spirit. And because your body, praise the Lord, is rebellious toward God, you've got to spend the rest of your life beating your body in subjection. Because if you don't, it's gonna help. It's gonna help you miss out on some opportunities that God got for you. If you don't put it in subjection, praise Lord, you will always walk around feeling condemned. Amen. Preach. Mm, mm, mm. He told us this. He says, "Praise the Lord, Hallelujah." That if so, that the Spirit of God be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But alive because of righteousness. Where does that righteousness come from? The righteousness is not coming from you. The righteousness is coming from the spirit of God that has transformed and changed your spirit. Y'all ain't hearing me. So he says, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It takes the Holy Spirit to be identified with God. 
God. We live right not to be saved. We live right because we are saved. The, the, the same reason why a dog barks. A dog is not barking, talking about woo, 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 woo. And you ask them, what are you barking for? I'm trying to be a dog. That wouldn't that sound silly. A dog does not bark because he's trying to be a dog. He is barking because he is a dog. Y'all ain't listening to me. Hallelujah. A cat meow because that's what their nature is. When God saves you, he gets down in the spirit, man, and he changes your spirit. And as a result of him changing your spirit, now you begin to walk like God. You begin to talk like him. And you begin to live like him. But I'm not living like him in order to be saved because he already saved me. I'm living like him because I am saved. Hallelujah. But now let me go ahead and settle this thing. Because even though you are saved, you still are carrying around this dead flesh. And sometimes this dead flesh has a way of getting in your way. And you will utterly mess up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord wanted to help you understand that just because you messed up does not mean praise our God that I stopped loving you and that I made you unsaved. And so the word of God, hallelujah, I'm going to have to get into it a little deeper, but the word of God says, hallelujah, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God who are the called according to his purpose. And then it comes I promise you, 
be lost. And if I don't live a certain way, I'm on my way to hell. And what I'm trying to tell you is that when God gets in your life, you want to do right because he's in your life. But, amen, pre-adventure, there may be something in your life that ain't like God. When you get saved, hallelujah, everything don't change overnight. And God has secured your salvation that while you're waiting on God, hallelujah, to redeem the body, he says, I'm going to secure you. I heard the Bible say, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And that's why it's important that while the breath, hallelujah, the blood is running warm in your veins, that you need to get God in your life. And the first way you get God in your life, you've got to first of all acknowledge that you have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you've got to be willing to repent of your sins. And what does repentance mean? Repentance means I'm sorry for what I've done. And I changed my mind. And I'm willing to do better. How But repentance alone is not enough to say. How many? Because repentance is what you're able to do in yourself. But every time you try to do the right thing, you always fall just a little short of doing the right thing. And I heard them sing a song, I got to make 100, because 99 and a half just won't do. I feel like preaching now. And I come to tell you, as long as you're in your flesh, you're never going to be able to make 100. You don't know how to make 100. I
And anybody that should have died, it should be David. All Saul did was not kill all the Amalekites. David, nobody is real. Say yes. yes. David messed around and killed a man. Yes. He murdered him after he knocked up his wife and then took his wife. Looked like to me, David would look like the wicked one. But ain't that something God said David was a man after God's own heart? We judge David by his actions. However, God was judging him by his heart. Ain't that just like us? We judge man because of the actions. But God judged him by the heart. Hallelujah. That's why you ain't qualified to judge. Because your measure stick is too short. How dare you question somebody's salvation when you don't know that they are on the potter's wheel. They are a work in progress.
Yes, sir. Say it. And guess what? It don't matter. It don't matter if you don't think I'm saying. Cause what you eat, don't make me think. I'm saying.
that created the slave, the blacksmith, that blow, the coals on the fire. That what it said. I'm the one that created the waste to destroy. The man, I created the man that made the man that made the weapon. And if I'm the one that made the man that made the man that created the weapon, then I can confidently tell you that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Now, did God ever show you anything about your life? He showed you something about your life, didn't he? He showed you. He kind of showed you how he tell you everything. But he kind of showed you that your ending was going to be better than your beginning. Right? Well, how in the world do you think coronavirus is going to kill you? If your life don't look like what he said. Get yourself together. Don't share some of that talk with him. Don't lose your mind. Get a grip on yourself. You got a word behind your name. You got a word behind your life. What promise will bring you out? Playing in your life. 
your mind telling you you ain't saved. But you knew God did something. And you want to say, Lord, I want a confirmation down in my soul today. But that's you meet me at the altar. Hallelujah. Because it's not about your feeling. It's about you believing what the word of God said. Somebody's been fighting a battle. And it's been crazy. Because you're wondering, Lord, out of all the crazy stuff I said and did, you really love me? You really care about me? And I'm telling you, God is madly in love with you. God has no delight in the death of a sinner. God has no delight in the death of someone that don't know him. The precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. You have an opportunity to be sure that you got what you need. Will there be one? Will there be one? All I can do is give the invitation. This is your season. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. Hallelujah. But he's a righteous God. And he says, I sent my son to die for you. I sent my son to pay your penalty. But if you don't receive my son, then that means you got to pay your own penalty. The wages of sin is death. The penalty is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Everyone bow your heads. Father, I want to thank you for this word today. And I pray today, Lord, that somewhere in the midst of the complications, in the midst of the confusion, that you will give your people peace. That we will quit becoming people pleasing that we will gain a relationship with you for ourselves. That we will quit allowing the enemy to use our emotions cause us to walk in condemnation. For if we walk in your spirit, the enemy can't condemn us. And I thank you for it today. I thank you for those that are here today, Lord. If there be any here, Lord, that need healing in their body, the great physician is here. Touch them today from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Bring divine healing. Call blood pressure to become normal. Call sugar levels to be normal. Normalize it now. In the name of Jesus. We command cancers to dry up now. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we preach and we pray against this coronavirus. Not only would it not come now, dwelling, but it would begin to dissipate in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. And somewhere between now and next week, let it be a gradual dis hallelujah dissipation. Let it decline. Let the folks say, Lord, we don't know what happened, but it's done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those that are watching my Facebook live, Lord, bring peace to their hearts, peace to their minds. You're able to do it, see. 
abundant. Above all that we can ask for. Now bless us today. We give your name the glory. And the praise shall be died in Jesus. Amen. Everybody standing till we thank God for the word that came forth. Bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Lord God, my heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the word that came forth. Oh God, you've given us a choice and let us know that we are saved. Oh God, and realizing that when we are in your hands, nothing can block us out. Oh God, help us to leave this place, God, but not from your presence. Help us to trust and rest in your word, regardless of what is going on in the world. Realizing that we are in the ark of safety. You know, God, that you will protect us. You will uphold us with your right hand. Realizing that you are undefeated and undisputed. There's nothing able, oh God, to defeat us. Oh God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are what God said we are. We shall have what God said we should have. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uplift the hands. May the Lord watch. Between I and thee. While we absent one from another, shake hands, have fellowship. You are